Cholera is obviously a stinky business, so you're probably wondering how you can avoid getting it. To understand this, we must first understand how you get it in the first place, how it's transmitted from person to person. As you already know, a person who is being affected by cholera is going to be discharging fatal amounts of diarrhea. Within this diarrhea is the cholera bacteria itself. If someone who is drinking water or eating food that has been contaminated with this cholera bacteria, they too will become infected. Who in their right mind drinks sewage water, right? That's insane. Well, by the time the sewage water gets to your drinking water, it's already so diluted that you're not going to notice it. Traditionally, cholera is transmitted through water. You drink water that's contaminated and you get sick. But sometimes, someone that has the cholera bacteria and handles your food, for, for example, can transfer enough of the bacteria onto your food to make you sick. This requires a higher dosage, but it does happen. Quick fact, in the mid-1800s, a London physician by the name of John Snow was successful in using statistics to not only link cholera to water, but to also pinpoint the exact pump that was causing a current outbreak. It would be some time before the rest of the world caught up to this idea, and it would be even longer before we realized that there were microbes and bacteria that were causing infections instead of just bad air, as was the common belief at the time. But his work was instrumental. Actually, not quite. It's true, in the United States and most developed countries, cholera is pretty much a thing of the past. But for the rest of the world, especially the developing world, cholera is a major world threat. It infects millions and kills hundreds of thousands of people every year. The fact is, cholera is difficult. There's no vaccines, and antibiotics are pretty much ineffective. The, the bacteria travels through the body much too quickly. So for the most part, the best prevention is just to simply avoid it. In the U.S., we take care of this in two ways. First, we clean all of our drinking water before it is consumed. It goes through massive systems that clean and filter the water so that by the time it gets to you, it's safe to drink. We also make sure that all of our sewage and septic systems are thoroughly contained. They must adhere to serious government standards, and that ensures that sewage and drinking water never mix. Even if someone who is infected with cholera travels to the United States, as often happens, the infection won't spread because it can't get into the water supply. That's a seal. But well, wait a minute. I want to go into far distant, undeveloped lands and see remote villages where, to be honest, there's not a whole lot of hygienic control. That's awesome. You can totally do that. But you need to take certain steps to make sure you stay safe, not only from cholera, but from other diseases as well. The prevention starts before you leave the U.S. The first thing you're going to want to do is see a doctor to see if you can get any medications that might prevent other microbes. This won't pertain to cholera, but it's a good idea. Then you're going to want to check this website. That's going to tell you about epidemics that are currently breaking out around the world so that you can either avoid those places or take extra precautions. Once you're overseas, your goal is going to be to make sure that your water isn't contaminated. There are several ways to do this. The first is to simply buy packaged water. We're talking water bottles with seals, Gatorade bottles with seals, anything with a seal that is coming straight from the manufacturer you know is not going to be contaminated. When you're out in the woods backpacking, you're out in distant places and you don't have access to stores or to manufactured products, your best bet is going to be filters, water purifiers, and simply boiling water. You can use all three, but make sure that you check with the manufacturer of these devices so that you know if it's rated for cholera or not. The biggest problem with cholera is that most people don't experience severe symptoms. Some don't experience any symptoms at all, so they might not even know they have cholera. The problem with this is that many people contaminated with cholera can travel about the world and go about their days, meanwhile infecting other people. I want you to imagine this backpacking trip. You've been on it for a couple weeks and you're having a great time. You've met interesting people, You've eaten great food, and you've seen great places. Bam! Next thing you know, you're sitting on the toilet, if you're lucky, clutching a bucket and feeling like you're going to die. Now what do you do? The first thing to do is to seek medical attention if you can. The difference between having symptoms and dying is only a few hours for cholera patients, so time is absolutely critical. 
But wait a minute, you're on a backpacking trip in the middle of nowhere in a distant land. There might not be a medical facility for hundreds of miles. What are you going to do? Rehydration is the treatment for cholera. So while you might not be at a medical facility, you can still do it. At a medical facility, you're usually going to see IVs and electrolyte rehydration solutions. You may not have an IV, but simply drinking an electrolyte drink aggressively can be very successful in treating cholera. You have to keep in mind that patients who die from cholera are dying from dehydration. So that's how you need to look at it if you're out on your own and you have to treat it by yourself or with a friend. Let's say you're having terrible symptoms. How do you know if it's actually cholera? The good news is you don't have to. If you're having severe diarrhea and losing lots of fluids, the treatment is going to be the same on your part. You should still be checked out by a physician though because if it's something else, there may be additional treatment required. All right, let's sum up. Cholera is transmitted through contaminated water that is then ingested. Then it can be prevented by proper water and sewage management. Finally, it is treated by rehydration, especially with electrolytes since both water and sodium are lost during a cholera attack. I hope you learned something and I hope you stay safe out there.